I'm constantly reintroduced to my emotional eating self. I mean, emotional eating was the start of my life and it's been with me forever and it's been a long time me trying to break up with it, you know, and really try to look at food more as purposeful and delicious and enjoyable, but less about a source of comfort and coping for hard times. So my parents got divorced when I was really young, and I think with every change in my family, food was my comfort, stability, mainstay. The earliest time I could remember thinking about my weight and having to be spoken about my weight was probably already as young as six or seven years old. Weight was a huge hindrance to my lifestyle. I couldn't do regular activities, and I avoided any activity that I thought would lead to shaming or making me feel uncomfortable. Food was all I ever thought about. Food and hating my body. That was what I would think about all the time. And uh, that was my mindset. I was really stuck in it. When I was eight years old, my pediatrician, my doctor, and my parents sent me to weight loss camp. I was the youngest one in camp. I mean, eight years old at sleepaway camp. Nine weeks, long time. I would come back to school every September, a new person. Tan, my mom would always get me brand new clothes. We would celebrate my new size and I'd be really excited about it, but I didn't take anything I learned with me, especially with my mindset of still using food as such a coping mechanism for my constantly changing and unbalanced childhood. It was never gonna sustain. So every year I'd go to camp and I'd lose about 30 pounds. That was like my average every summer. I'd lose 25 to 30 pounds in nine weeks because every school year I'd gain 50 pounds. I relied on fat camp every summer to lose 30 so I can catch up with my pace because I was terrified if I didn't go to camp one summer. I relied on that pattern and that pattern became like safety and security for me and almost permission. Like every summer, yeah, I can lose 30 pounds, so I could eat whatever I wanted in the school year. So after I did the yo-yoing for a couple of years, I was in eighth grade. And eighth grade, I was my absolute, absolute highest. I just exploded, like way bigger than ever. I probably was always a size 12 in adults, even though I was a kid. And then all of a sudden I was a size 20. That school year, I probably gained 60 pounds rather than 50 or 40 like the past. My parents both showed up to school and they said, we need to talk. And they just wanted me to like not take all of this issues with me to high school. So that summer, I weighed in at 210 and I weighed at a 185 and a size 16, determined to only stay there or lose more weight. I just felt like I'm in the wonderland, I'm in those ones, goodbye twos forever. Now I can only lose weight. And I decided I'm gonna go on the scale no matter what to ensure of that. And that's when I started using the scale. And I think it's been just tremendous in making sure I keep my weight off teaching me how to lose weight, but also crushing emotional eating for sure. One thing I realized that school year, freshman year of high school, was I tried to look like what was working for me in camp. Obviously, I'm not gonna exercise 10 hours a day. That's ridiculous, I have to sit in class. But I was going up for a lot of vegetables. So veggies were always the perfect, perfect comfort food for me, because you could eat a lot of them, they're delicious and you can keep losing weight and nothing else is like that. Nothing else will ever be like that. And that's why vegetables have always been so important to me. So I decided, okay, maybe I could keep pulling that off for the school year. So between going on the scale once a week at least and eating a lot of vegetables, I was staying okay. And then I would, I would weave in the treadmill sometimes and try to keep as much going with me that I learned in the summer in the school year as possible. As early as eight years old, I knew I wanted to be a dietitian. The dietitians I always experienced were kind with me, took small steps with me, were positive, smart, cute looking. I just always knew I wanted to be a dietitian just like they were. So I went to the University of Maryland to study nutrition because they have an amazing program. And after freshman year of college, I went back to the weight loss camp to be a counselor. At that point, I had lost 65 pounds. And I felt amazing about that. So I kind of took my mind off of weight loss a little bit, but I still tracked. And that was really important for me. Literally on the corner of my notebook, every single day, I would write down my food. 
I always have to watch what I'm eating and everything. So I used to track my food and then I had a scale in my dorm room and I maintained 150 pounds through college. And then of course I drank and I partied and all of that too. But as long as I had the scale and I had my principles in, it worked. I graduated college. I then wanted to get my registered dietitian license and you have to do a residency, kind of like a doctor does. And I partnered at City of Hope Hospital, which is top 15 cancer hospitals in the country. So I, I became a registered dietitian, I passed my boards, and then I got hired from UCLA right away. They gave me 70 to 100 UCLA employees enrolled in the program who wanna lose weight, and I just created the curriculum for 12 weeks. And then I got pregnant. At this point, I've had such control over my body and my weight that seeing the scale go up out of my control and seeing my body take new form was daunting and troubling for me. I really didn't enjoy it. So the last trimester of my pregnancy, at that point I had hundreds of clients and I decided, okay, what's worked for me in the past because the second this baby is out, I am dropping this weight. So I started getting really careful, veggies most, gotta use the scale every day. I'm gonna write down everything I eat because that's the only thing that's made sure that I lose weight on my own all the time. And the water came to me after there. So I gave birth to my daughter, Olivia, left the hospital at 178 pounds. I had veggies most, I had write everything down, I had the scale, but water, 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 water. I went from 178 to literally 125. I lost 50 pounds in six months. Water first, veggies most. That's when I coined it, that's when I trademarked it, that's when it all came together. All my clients were like, just melting off weight with the two bunnies, just in my office, I came to it. Follow these four principles, water first, veggies most, use the scale, and you gotta write down everything you're eating. This is the best program for someone who has a lot of weight to lose, because if you follow the basic principles, they make sense. Not just because they make sense for me and my weight loss and losing 100 pounds. Not just for all my successful clients, both in private practice and at UCLA, but also backed by research. I'm in the National Weight Control Registry. It's the longest study out there for weight loss in America of people who lost weight and kept it off. All the principles are backed by that. So I'm just gonna show you every tip, strategy, tool that has worked for hundreds and hundreds of people to lose weight happily, keep it off forever, so you can do it too. So I was just in a client session and I was like, don't be frustrated, do everything I'm doing. It works so well every single time for everyone I'm working with. And then I guess I was like in a daze of new motherhood and like up all night breastfeeding and with my daughter. I was like, two bunnies. It looks like two bunnies, just bunnies. Oh look, they hop. You can hop into weight loss, just you gotta follow these things. 2B Mindset, coming May 2018. For more information, visit 2bmindset.com.